In this demonstration, you'll learn how to import differential nets from a Cadence board file and set up an HFSS 3D layout model for simulation. For the purposes of this demonstration, we'll use the Intel Galileo board. Within the ANSYS Electronics desktop, go to File, Import, Cadence BRD, and select the Galileo board. The translator will extract a list of nets for this design from the Cadence file. The translator displays the list of available nets in the board design. You can choose to translate all of them or just a subset. In this case, we're interested in the ground and PCI Express differential pairs, so we'll use the filters to select just those nets for import. When you click OK, it invokes the translator and it pulls out the information from the Cadence database. Here you see the 3D layout view of the Galileo board. We'll enable all of the layers. The next step is to clip a region of interest. Zoom in and then go to the Nets tab. Highlight the PCI Express transmit channel. You can see the differential pair going from the processor to the many PCI Express slots, and also the series AC coupling caps near the connector. For high frequency extraction, we're going to extract just this region of interest. Under the Layout menu, select Cutout Subdesign. In this dialog, you can include all of these nets or clip just the ground net. From the Auto Generate Extent option, you can derive the region from the signal nets. You can do this by entering a fraction of the net size. After clicking OK, you'll get a preview of what the clipping polygon looks like. Alternatively, you can draw the polygon yourself and use that for the cutout region, as will be shown here. Select the Polygon Draw option to create the geometry. Use the D key to lock out 45 degree angles, and then draw a nice conforming polygon region around the area of interest. With the polygon selected, bring up the Cutout Subdesign dialog box. Select the nets. Notice that the polygon is pre selected as the clipping extent. Click OK to complete the operation. The original layout is not modified. Instead, the clipping operation produces a new design in your project. Now review this design and the components that were included. Select the top layer. Zoom in to see the breakout region of the processor, including the differential pair vias and the ground net that was captured with the cutout. Now zoom in to see the connector side. Observe that a few ground pins have been preserved along with the differential pair at this connector interface. Select the default view. Here we see series AC capacitors for the transmit channel. You can also see the capacitors in the top-down view in sketch or wireframe mode. These capacitors, along with their values, are captured by the Cadence translator. Select a capacitor and click Model Info to see the properties of this component and the actual capacitance values. Here you have a 0.1 microfarad cap. These series capacitors are ultimately modeled using circuit elements in the HFSS solver. Next, we'll configure the solution volume. Click the HFSS Extents Visibility option to see the air box and dielectric extents. These are automatically generated as a function of the geometry. Right-click the design and select HFSS Extents to change the bounding region to conformal if you want. But for this model, keep the default bounding box as is. Next, we'll configure the excitations. Toggle to the Sketch mode, and from the Components window, expand the IC and IO elements. Select the IC component with reference designator U2A5. And for the connector, select the I.O. component J2L1. Right-click to create ports on both components. Then select all the PCI Express nets to create the ports. Now we'll add some solder balls to the components. Graphically select the processor and click Model Info to bring up the Component Model dialog. You can assign the die type as flip chip and the orientation as chip down. Toggle the solder ball shape to cylinder, and the default sizes will be assigned based on the pin geometry. On the connector side, we'll now create a common reference and assign it a vertical offset of 0.25 millimeters. 
Finally, we'll create a perfect electric conductor boundary to connect the ground pins at the connector interface. Right-click the I.O. and select Create Ports on Components. Select Ground Net and then set the type to PEC. Select Default Transparent View to see the complete model. This concludes this demonstration for importing a pair of differential nets from a Cadence board file and setting up the HFSS 3D layout design for simulation. Thank <music> you.